All right, here we are on to a map two, which of course you can see is overpass by freaking B and K. Wasn't a particularly close affair on the first map of Nuke, but we'll see if Minefreak can cut the mustard a little better here on map 2. Especially considering starting on CT side of Overpass, you might have a little bit more of a favourable outcome. Yeah, you can see BNK feeling out the short control, Brace not feeling the need to pull the trigger on that flash, and instead, it's going to be a Heaven Smoke and Pop Flash over the top of Short. Molly goes over onto Barrels. Can Slimey hit a shot from this boost position though? Try to chip down the numbers before they ensue on the retake. Unfortunately not. So, end up in a 5 on 5 retake. Mind Freak just taking their time to clear out Connector here. Well, PC's uh, waiting in a little bit of a unanticipated position. He's able to strike for 2. 2 for 1. Definitely a favourable enough trade that BNK will be happy with that one. And it gives Mind Freak quite a lot to worry about. Small benefit is they do have a defuse kit in the back pocket of Tux. Oh, where'd they go? What? <laughs> <laughs> that was like a magic trick. I'll make this yeah. BNK disappear. <laughs> oh, damn, what the heck was that? He'll die in half a second. What? Wanna see a magic trick? It's, it's like. Four. Yeah. He fledged off. I remember that scene. You know? I remember that scene. Yeah. RIP. Tell you what, if this was ANZ Champs, we'd have one of those, uh, one of those guys setting up a nice little video right now for us it would be really be a ptz and mac would definitely slam his own head on the table i guarantee yeah. that yeah we'll explain a lot. About... <laughs> i know exactly what you mean it needs no explanation b and k though with the bomb plant they can uh buy themselves galil's an armor an he grenade and a smoke that will be the purchase Mind Freak, well aware that the bomb plant came on in. They're going to use the tactical timeout just to have a chat about how to tackle a round like this. Making sure they've got enough firepower. It's going to be rifles across the board, somewhat limited util. You often know that you're playing against, you know, one of these kind of set play rounds with a couple of rifles and maybe like a mac 10 and a bit of util and you're going to be playing some kind of exe or it is very much going to be kind of rifle split and peak approach so you can see the initial util there for mind freak i keep the t's at arm's length initially this will be actually not a pop flash play oh it is a pop flash play i didn't see the flash even come in there it was already at, out of gump's hands at that point and that's actually been beautiful no head armor on PZ means that he's gone down straight away. AK will likely be upgraded to by one of these BNK players as they make their way back towards this A side of the map. But that is just a simple play from Mind Freak that gets them an opening pick. Very well executed. Yeah. Well, it seems the tables have turned a little bit. BNK just wolf packing their way toward A. Not doing it on uh, too bad of a timing, actually. They can make quite a lot of ground for free. But now that Super set himself up in A2 jump spot over the top of Dice, it might get a little bit more difficult. He'll just chuck a flash up high in the air to try to slow things down, and the rest of the Mind Freak lads from Long can start to work their way back toward the site. There'll be a smoke toss in for jump up, but this is a very difficult crossfire to break for BNK. That said, they do a decent job of it. The only thing is going to be they're not expecting another player from long, and so Gump gets a freebie on Damio, who's walking his way across into bank. But still, a post plant two on three. It's not unwinnable for BNK, especially if Hazard's going to start it like that and look for more. And Gump now, I mean, just has to do it himself. He wasn't given any opportunity really to activate in this round. Oh. Not getting that opening kill, some good chip damage onto Hazard, but the stopping power of the Famous isn't quite too scary. And while he's getting, what, eight damage per shot through that wall, it's just not going to be enough. Even though Hazard was low, B and K will win the round, and it's disaster for Mind Freak after such a nice pistol. Mind you of anything, Jordan? Yeah, nuke. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Will they convert the Force Buy, though? That's the question. Because pistol armor, Force Buy, only two guns taken over for B and K. Could be into the Force Bite Fiesta territory. I mean, I, I know you love that. I know you miss it. I do. There was an era of CSGO we casted together where I remember like six Force Buys back-to-back -back going back and forth in some of these ghost games. 
Let's go one for one for one for one. It is an A stack though, and BNK not going to the A side of the map. Probably will work out quite well for them. Gumps checking out the Lordmower in T spawn though. He's got a pretty pretty quick timing on the flank here. Rest of Mind Freak has start to filter down Con. You never know. This could work. Oh dear. Or it couldn't. PZ. Ah. Yeah. You gotta back him with the Glock there once uh once it gets down to that kind of a messy fight, like the guy who's actually hit the first couple of shots, you usually back to get the third kill as well. So that's pretty good as far as BNK is concerned. Damn. Like these big swing momentum rounds right at the start of the game. Just going away from Mind Freak in both games. That's crushing for them. Absolutely crushing. And in the same fashion as well, like round two, that was very much just XVX. Superiority in the post plan from Hazard. Like just intuitively knowing where to push and what duels to take. That's really what this whole game has come down to. Which I think is quite promising for BNK. Sometimes they can kind of struggle in that department. But let's so against teams of this caliber, I think. I'd love to see the Damio change coming into the team be BNK hitting a new level. That'd be great. Ooh, how about Damio hitting an ace? How about that? Oh, oh he dodged the flash. flash. No, no, that was Addict's flash from spawn. Has a stole it. That's okay. It was there for the taking. Yeah. Mind Freak now playing CT side on hard mode, Jordan. It's a 4 to 4.5k buy up against a T side that never runs out of money for the rest of this game. Probably. This is what happens when you start slow on the CT side, unfortunately. Yeah. It's going to be a fast connect to play from B and K here, which is going to be pretty bad news for Slimy. Door's been blown off. The Super door actually... just keeps doing that, have you noticed? What? Like half it keeps breaking? keeps like, yeah, half breaking every time. I don't know if that's a visual bug going around at the moment. Could be. Ooh. Has a... Took him a bit of work to get rid of Slimy there, but he's got the job done. Prompt a response from Mind Freak to walk their way onto short. And Tuxel spot Addict out. Addict didn't even really get much of a chance. Still... Decent trade from PZ and BNK will maintain the numbers advantage. I'm going to peek in the mid round long A for info and actually does pick up Hazard, which is going to give Mind Freak maybe a bit of a misread that this is a pivot back to A. Flash thrown over the top from PZ trying to sell that, but it's still two players on short B here for Mind Freak. Works. Good for one, but not the other. And Super's going to be dug out by that Molly, so he's not going to be able to get much done. And that should result in a pretty straightforward bomb plan here for BNK. Plenty of smokes to make PZ feel nice and cuddly. Oh, but Gump has gotten the better of that one, and so Brace has now got a fair chunk of work to do. Might have been better off planting safe there in the end. Maybe Brace one or two, though. My Freak has really struggled to convert these clutches, but he's only got 10 seconds. Surely there's no way he can finish this one off. Got a plant. Short players probably got it done. In fact, they're going to swing together and clean him up. So that's going to be Mind Freak doubling up their rounds here. Or retained a couple of utils actually farmed up at the end of the round there for Super. Going to give him much better util than he would have had access to, given the fact that he has to drop one over to one of the other boys. B and K still with money to continue to buy forward. PZ's chipped through a fair bit of that cash, buying two orbs back to back though. But still, Mind Freak very resettable in this scenario. BNK less so. They'll have a kind of weird money. It'll probably be hero AKs in the next round if they drop this one. So it's still a dangerous one for Mind Freak to navigate. The game never really gets easy from this kind of start. Yeah. Heavy, heavy A setup and connector here for Mind Freak. Only one player playing retake B, that's Tux. 
oh, it still timing. doesn't work out. Like, they're so heavily set up towards the A side of the map and connector, and they still get timing like that. Well, what's Tux going to do here with an MB9? He's at least going to get his util out before he drops. But he does drop indeed pretty comfortably for BNK. Three player retake would maybe not be ideal, even with that kill on to Addict. A three on four retake on B doesn't sound like it's it. So, so Lone Freak recognizing as well. I mean, they save the AWP, fair bit of util, uh, Super can drop a rifle over, it's a 1900 loss bonus, so it'll be another similar looking buy from Mind Freak, three rifles, AWP and probably MP9 or pistol. So they're going to try and go again with less reset potential this time. Mind Freak, I feel though most of this series has a lot of timings they're getting caught on by BNK. We're taking full advantage of that. Okay, gonna do sensible things with their economy or stacking up in the bank. Keeping their cash nice and good, earning interest and all that. I did finance once, like five years ago. I know about are. all of that. You know, really good at it? Not the first time. The second time it was a lot easier though, if I'll have you know. Oh. Why? Because you had more money. That's it. Compounding interest, baby. No, I don't know. Compounding um, interest is good. Love it. Yeah. With the contest. It's actually a one four this time from B and K. Addict putting some util pressure on that B side just to deny info to Munfreak. And again, they're super heavy setup on brackets and connector here. Playing completely retake B. It's the same setup again. From Mind Freak. This time they're hard rotating B though. They are all over the Ooh, place. They were not ready word. for the try contact long there. Yeah. yeah, God. Well, that's not a bad setup from the CT side. The flash over the top was good enough to dislodge Brace, and Slimey's been given room to work with that orb, which is now starting to cause problems. That said, PZ. Well, only one. It's not enough. And so BNK. Really relying on Addict to make something work here. Bomb dropped along. Gonna try to isolate some duels if he can. Super's the main man playing that Optimus corner. Tux and Slimy ready to swing off his contact. Should be a done deal. Yeah, well, not even requiring the swing. It's just super to get it done. 4-3. BNK still maintaining the lead, and they will still have enough to buy into the next round. So, again, as you've reiterated a couple of times, actually, the job just doesn't get any easier for Mind Freak. No. I do like Mind Freak backing themselves, though. It kind of reminds me of Nuke. You know, they're very much sticking to the strat book. Like, the uppers plays weren't closing them out rounds because they couldn't close the XVXs. That last connector setup didn't work because they got timed, but they don't. that doesn't mean they don't run it again at all. In fact, they ended up with the exact same buy that they ran that play with in the next round, and they gave it another crack, and it worked. So, One for one. Not too bad. Folex will take that with an MP9. Can't be getting overly greedy. Oh, and Hazza almost gets caught walking his way up connector as well so mind freak are doing a decent enough job of harassing pnk on their way around the map but it's obviously not without some kind of recompense by that damage onto forlex and onto super slimy looking for a pick in the mid round here pnk starting to make their way towards eight damio punished on the peak out bathrooms Looking like the bomb may pivot back towards the B side if PC can open something up over here as the util pressure comes out long from Hazard. I'm interested to see what Hazard's going to be able to get done up on A. There is still time for BNK to get the bomb up there, but it's going to be pretty tight. And PZ walking his way on to B. Has been able to strike, so it'll be bombed back in the direction of B, but they still do have to dislodge Tux. 
And he's crept his way across to the toxic barrels, which is going to be a difficult one to clear for BNK. Brace. Oh, does actually win that duel. And he's able to cross for the bomb plant too. This is maybe on offer still for BNK. Super making a little bit of noise there. Slimy will get a clean one with the nade. And the shot through as well. He's having a great map here as the AWP on the CT side. That's exactly what you want. And it is giving Mind Freak a fighting chance. That was a great round of win as well. I think that actually breaks the T side economy finally. Was well, not an easy road back into the game for Mind Freak, but this time in comparison to Nuke, they actually are started to make it work. Anti eco attempt here for Mind Freak. If they don't take too much damage, they could build up enough cash to actually have a pretty reasonable half here on the CT side overpass. That is much more promising than what we saw on Nuke. Very nicely timed grenade. Oh, and the spam from Super is looking pretty solid as well, but no kills just yet from Mind Freak. And BNK are going to look to swarm their way onto that B bomb site like a bunch of scurrying ants. The only issue is going to be that, well, they haven't really got any opportunities to find any kills. Good defensive smokes, good, great, great defensive util. And it's keeping BNK pretty much in the dark. Is about as clean of an anti eco as you're going to expect to get. Just has it left alive with a P250 in hand, but yeah, Mind Freak made no mistake. Really nicely done. Even a flash to seal the deal. Five alive for Mind Freak. Clean anti eco. Much cleaner game of Counter Strike. This is what we want to see for Mind Freak. Don't want to see them get rolled um, like they did on Nuke. We know that. Like on paper, and the core of this team can push teams of the caliber of a BNK here in the Oceanic region. And I think this is a much better example of it. Let's see how BNK respond though. Bit of a lighter buy for them, no AWP on PZ. I have to go down to a couple of Galils to shore up the util. Bit of util pressure here on the B side of the map. From the T side. Tau boost. CTs flash over the top, avoided nicely from Super, and another pick found by Slimy. Repeak punished heavily though by Damio, but still up in numbers are the CTs. Oh, BNK that. gonna have to take some time to regroup. Look at that monster push. They got full info on B. kind of shenanigans can Damio get up to? 8 and 6 for the map so far. It's been pretty decent. Race making a fair bit of noise on long. The two-man spray down from PZ. We'll keep it honest and keep it interesting. Here's another chance for BNK to do a bit of a number to the CT side. It's a smart, safe plant from PZ. Tux can't quite get there to deny anything. And while one of the members was spotted... Working their way into bank. They don't really have much of a read on where Damio is at the moment. Smoke down on the bomb. Tucks for the tap. And the util getting tossed up over the top. PZ. Won't be able to get the better of 4x in the end. And so Mind Freak win another. Yeah, it's been really well worked for them. XVX is starting to look a little better. Look a little bit more coordinated. BNK, weird money situation. Bomb plant allows them access to a buy if they want one, but it'll be a little lighter on the util, unless they want to go down to Galil's. We're going to go for it, though. Has, uh, no, has has got head armor. Just Brace with no head armor here. Which against a couple of M4s could be somewhat problematic. Addict Util Pressure on the B side of the map. 
Doors blown open and Slimy playing the same boost position. But smoked off, so he's going to fall back into that rotator roll. Deep bathroom control here for Mind Freak and an info line on short. Connector control being taken by BNK. And it looks like they're going to turn this into a bit of a B split. Tux's Molly going to be quite key here, as well as probably the reactive barrel smoke from 4 x So juggle around the util. Oh, B and K going to give it another crack on B. Hasn't been super successful on this T side. Once again, that util coverage is really good for Mind Freak. Just making it tough for BNK to push their way in. PZ is able to strike and so too is Damio. Finally something goes right. That's a little bit better time from BNK on the peaks. Meanwhile, that bomb plant did go down and so super and slimy to try to salvage. But BNK working hard for these last couple of rounds of the half and it's one out of two and Mind Freak, well, they'll be able to get a buy here. Forlex has got a lot of cash. Yeah, probably... Orp dropped a slimy from Tux and Forlex dropping at least a single rifle. Someone will have to go without. Flash has made all the difference in that round from BNK. I like the util protocol. Honestly, it was looking kind of good for Mind Freak, right? The reactive smoke on Barrel's side. Uh, I thought they would put the molly on short, but actually the molly on the other side of Pillar and then isolating that short fight worked out really well for them. It's just that Tux, he thought he had the god position and then he caught a face full of that flash and it kind of fell apart from there. I don't mind this for Mind Freak though, the double orb. They had kind of weird money and it's right at the end of the half, so it's really not going to punish their economy at all. Not uh, a bad time to go for it, if any. BNK have been pretty liberal about working connector and pushing a player up short B quite regularly so as well as a bit of A pressure. Mind Freak should know after seeing a, a full half of uh, T side from BNK where they can potentially find picks with these orbs. One of them's going long. Pick up connector is Hazard and Gump's going to punish with the MP9. Really nice movement down the stairs there. Might not be so easy for BNK to equalize at the end of this half now. Maybe a creep through the monster smoke and one for one there is not too bad for BNK, but it's not really enough to kind of seal the deal all that much. Especially with PZ being the only one over there and having holding onto the bomb. He's just gonna have to take a bit of a chill pill and back off. Okay, exploring connector. My freak giving them absolutely nothing. It's going to be four legs left on the B side of the map here. And they're leaning quite heavily towards A, which I'm quite surprised about given that Slimy is still deep bathrooms here. I feel like B is, I mean, you know, obviously from this position, the more likely of the two sites. That's a nice couple of shots from 4x. So BNK not really posing too much of a threat in this one. That Molotov has just what? gone into the roof. Not that it's really going to make much of a difference. BNK were pretty cooked anyway. 7 to 5 from Mind Freak and a nice little response in the first half of map 2.
Much better stuff from Mind Freak here on map 2 than what we got to see on map 1. Gives you a little bit of hope that they might actually be able to take one off of B and K tonight. The thing is though, they have moved on to the T side, which will be a little bit more difficult to get some value out of than the CT side of Overpass. But 7-5 scoreline, it's definitely something to work with. This around I, would be nice. Yeah, I agree. I'd love to see it as well, to be honest. I'm always rooting for a team like Mind Freak. Absolute slaughter on offer here, though, right off the bat. Flash over the top, trying to scale out over past the rock side, but that's exactly what Damio's doing to them. Tuck's able to even things up to a piece, though, and this is just one of those weird situations where all of the fights happen in a random corner of the map, and then, like, everything's dirty territory as a T side from here. And, like, PZ's push is a perfect example of that. It's like... They're waiting for a further CT aggression, which I don't mind. There's still plenty of time left on the clock, but it, these are such weird rounds to have to navigate as a T side sometimes. And obviously as the CTs, you can't hold everything, which is why you often see pushes like this. That's just great patience from Mind Freak. Not over yet though. All right. Addict and Brace been a little bit quiet on this map. For B and K, the lion's share of the work has been done by Damio and PZ. Addict going 3 and 9 is something that is certainly uncharacteristic. But Tooley's in hand. Could be his round. We'll see. B and K are just going to hedge their bets and sit in the connector. Give themselves a chance to rotate a little quicker to whichever bomb site this ends up being. Seems like they've got a good idea that it might have been towards B, but gonna have to get a bit of a wriggle on now. And certainly making a bunch of noise on their way in as well. Pop flash over the top. Smoke out for the defuse, but no defuse kit either, so BNK really have to get a bit of a wriggle on. Addict's just gonna have to send it in. Looks like Brace will be the first one through. Addict set up to try to trade, but they haven't even found any of the Mind Freak members just yet at all. Oh. Two quick kills. It's not going to be fast enough to win the round, but it might just get a little bit of extra <laughs> cash in the back pocket for Addict, which is nice, I suppose. But no. that is Mind Freak getting the T-side pistol. I mean, if you survive with armor there when you get a 3k pistol, that's A1S armor territory. Not going to be allowed, though. And there you go, Mind Freak. Look, it's not done yet, but something's happening. We're getting somewhere. Let's not count our something. chickens before we hatch, though. These round twos have been difficult to navigate, to say the least. For Mind Freak this series. They've lost all three, haven't they? Round twos? Uh, or or, or, or it might be just right. be two out of three. So it might be two out of three, but yeah, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been enough that it's a concern. Yeah. They even took attack pause to try to avoid it. But has a sometimes feels a bit inevitable. The way though, cheeky little setup for Big NK contest in the middle of the map. Boost up on sandbag, two man connector. Two one two for Mind Freak. It looks like what Scump setting up a smoke for. Prog smoke to outside connector thrown for Super. Okay, pretty good from Mind Freak so far. Yeah. Kind of heads up stuff to have that second player in connector. I don't know if that was just a case of fortunate timing, but that definitely helped out. If that just ends up going like two for two and you have the middle of the map dirty, then the round kind of gets a bit more complicated. But now we end up in a four on two. My freak's looking pretty solid. Yeah, I don't think there's much for Brace and Damio in this one. Even if Mind Freak walk into the A site. Brace can maybe get one, but MP9 doesn't really have the punching power to double down in a situation like this normally. That's very clean on the Fallex, but wasn't expecting Slimy quite so close. And yeah, Damio left solo. Can't do much either. It is nine on the board for Mind Freak. And B and K are going to have to do something about this pretty quick smart. It shouldn't be this round though. No, they're... This uh, single save, then look, they've still got they've still got potential. Money hasn't ballooned out of control here. You'd love to see 
Little bits of investment. A nade stack could be quite juicy. Haven't seen one in a while. I remember old version of Overpass CSGO when I was playing officials on it. The nade stack into onto the party stairs was like deadly. I would win mm. more rounds than you had business winning. Back in the day when nade stacks were like popular, you know, like just nade down Minanana on Inferno and see what happens. You know, sometimes you went around because people weren't on top of like the protocols and the way that they scaled B and K in this case though kind of holding them as an anti-rush protocol for B but mind freak doing the sensible thing and not rushing B anti-eco instead taking long A control and using the range potentially wrap back clear out bathrooms and probably just exit the A site but we'll see what their approach will be Don't half uh, mind this position that Mindfreak have found themselves in. But I tell you what, it's easy to get to the 10-5 and go, well, we've won this map. When you haven't. Uh, nah, I don't think so if you're a team like Mindfreak. Oh, the nade stack on the plant. Yeah, this could be awkward. Nice oh, he fake. tapped it. He yeah. tapped it. Very Genius. Heads up. Very heads up. <laughs> Still a couple more through there, but it's not going to be enough to do anything of sizable damage to Mind Freak. And they keep every single gun in check. 10 to 5 the scoreline. But I think this is really where the real job starts for the T side. I wonder if they've screamed to be in K before. Like, that's quite an interesting thing to play around. Or whether reckon... that's just trendy at the moment. I reckon that's something that... Like, you've got plenty of time on the clock. May as well just... Why not? I just think most people wouldn't do it. Maybe, maybe you're right. That's pretty smart. I love seeing plays like that. Because I agree with you, why not? But I don't think most teams are are really why notting. Yeah. You know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Anyway. One one three at the start of the round for Mind Freak, just a little bit sick. You till pressure on connector on B but after that they very quickly group up towards the A side of the map. Flash is now being thrown over the top of Long and Party. See if PZ is going to punish with the AWP here. Doesn't quite hit the shot but it's a little bit of info gathered there. Has has got the whole middle of the map. He's cleared out connector. That's going to prompt the rotate from Damio. They're already pushing into divider. The duels on divider side are probably going to decide this round, and especially when you've got Hazard on the pivot up through connector. This could be disastrous for Mind Freak. They're running into a meat grinder. They don't even know it yet. Quite a lot of footsteps being made by Mind Freak. So B and K, well aware. There are bodies on the top side of the map. Perfectly timed smoke as well. It's bad news for Mind Freak. Tux has been tagged down. They're going to go through the smoke. PZ already striking and... Nothing you can really do there as super. It's a winning duel every day of the week for PZ. This hasn't amounted to too much for Mind Freak. Best case scenario, they're going to try to get some damage and Forlex might just catch a timing onto Addict, but makes a meal of it. And Tux can't do too much beyond that fact. So 10 to 6 and BNK will begin their campaign on the CT side. Very convincingly, mind you, like that, that round was there like, from the, the get-go, right? Mm. Has it like clearing the middle of the map on that info push and the whole A stack that they had going on very early on. Like, I don't know. It, it feels like both of these teams have some familiarity. I think they must be screwing each other. Because like B and K were very confident in that A stack and they cleared the map in a certain way that you wouldn't usually see. Mind Freak's playing around the Nate stack. Like, I feel like these teams are f quite familiar with each other right now on this map. But could just be imagining things. Regardless, Mind Freak, again, it's Util Pressure Connector, Util Pressure at B. This time from B and K, quite heavily stacked on the B site. After completely slamming Mind Freak at A, they uh, feel like the BXE is definitely going to be the play. And and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, B and K are so convinced that it's going to be B that they stack it early on. It's almost like they've seen the playbook from Mind Freak in practice and they're already trying to stay one step ahead. 
in this case though uh, similar to what i saw earlier uh, said earlier mind freak it seems like they have this calling style that they're not results oriented like some other teams you know just because they got slammed on a by that setup they are still quite happy to try to go for this same play The one two punch from Addict and PZ looks pretty solid though. Uh, Simi's got way too much to worry about. This is looking very clean on the CT side from BNK so far. Has me worried about Mindfreak's chances of finishing this off. Win. Yeah, I mean, they started out in the B sack and they just kind of transitioned the mid round. Very, very well. Pushing Addict up onto that flower pot. They had the time to do that. Wondering whether Mind Freak may be just taking a little bit too long to get organized in some of these rounds and giving BNK the ability to kind of outplay them positionally in the last couple of rounds. That's what it's really felt like to me. Mm. Hero AK on Gump, but this has to be mostly a save for Mind Freak, who, after back to back rounds, getting kind of. Slammed by BNK have allowed the CT's economy to kind of balloon out, and now it's going to be much harder for them to close this game overpass. Tamia is going for a little bit of an adventure. Clearing out short water is a nice thing to do at this point. B and K have a lot of control around that B bomb site, so even if Mind Freak do somehow get in here, maybe off the back of Gump, nice couple of entries. Retake shouldn't necessarily be too difficult. And uh, well, certainly the Glocks have not struck. And Gump with that AK, unable to find really much of an angle to do anything there either. So 10 to 8, and the string of rounds continues for B and K. Another chance for Mind Freak, though. We'll see if they've got like a different play that they can mix in. They've very much been going for this long A control into an attempt on an exit that really has not been working. This time it's a much heavier setup towards B. Tucks, little bit of util pressure on A113 from Mind Freak. A long pressure and a duel being taken by Hazard, denied early by Tux. It's a really good pick to be getting for this T side because they're not heavy towards A. They want to deny that info if they can. PC still managed to push deep on that A long info line. She's going to keep three CTs on B for the time being despite losing that pick on the A side of the map. Or two CTs in the added contesting connector rather. And here comes this B exec that I think B and K were playing around a few rounds ago. Addict has been a completely different player on first half to second half. He's gone to 15 and 11. I don't even know where that's come from, but... Brace will get run over. That is actually going to allow entry into the site. Bomb trailing behind. But Mind Freak have been able to work their way forward and they get themselves another one onto Damio. It's just PZ. He is fast on the flank. That's the one benefit. He might be able to get one kill for free. If he gets his timing right. But this looks to be an impossible task now with the post fight positioning that Mind Freak have taken. And PC starting to think better of it as well. Knows this is going to be a long game potentially. Keep that money in check. It's not a bad choice. He'll back off and save the orb. Good stuff from Mind Freak. Even though, you know, the round got a little tentative here and there. Getting contested, losing that picking connector. They're still able to convert that. B side after plant and slap 11 on the board. Really nice opener from Tux, has to be said, denying that aggression on the A side of the map. Especially Galil versus M4. Not an easy duel to be winning. But as mentioned before, it's not like BNK have too shaky of an economy right now. They're going to reinvest in this round and still, especially with the AWP retained, going to have cash in the bank to probably keep going the distance here.
been a pretty interesting game at Overpass. I feel like there's a lot of reads being made by both of these teams right now. Much quicker pace up onto the A side, and this time Tux is the one to lose his life off the bat. Jumped down early as well. Even if it is at the cost of Hazza's life, I think B and K will be happy with the proceedings so far. It almost feels like this might be a map that is destined for overtime. You know, Mindfreak are kind of plugging away and you get the sense that they'll be able to find a round here or there, but I'm just not, the, not sure that they've got enough to really play with to sort of say that they're definitely going to be able to knock this one over. Yeah, as I said, I've been looking really good on the CT side of Overpass, which didn't come as too much of a surprise. Slimy contesting here. Getting heavily utiled on that choke. No opportunity for him to be able to find Brace despite knowing where he is. Super gets chunked by a nade. After flashing, attempting to flash his teammate out. Monster Slimy still can't slip out a monster. He's denied entry. Super can't get up short B. And this is just really good util usage and chemistry from BNK to not even give the T's any chance of even finding a pick back into this round. Well, 11 to 9. Starting to creep a little closer and probably getting a bit uncomfortable for Mind Freak now. They'll take a save. Perhaps running out of ideas, though. All it would take is two more rounds. But sometimes the last couple are the hardest. BNK are really into the swing of things on this second half, so... Fast to play from BNK on the top side of the map. The forward util smoke Molotov toward playground. Mind Freak not too concerned about that. They decide to just run straight on through it. Don't even take any damage from all that util that was thrown, but has a spotted all of the T players, so that'll be news for Mind Freak. That'll just speed things up. Right into the waiting arms of the AK. T's now trying to scale out long A. BNK trying to dominate, divide RPZ, punished. Peeking out long there. Nice shot from Tux. Has us taken some chip damage in the meanwhile. Swinging around on divider side as well. So a couple of pistol shots from Mind Freak. Starting to make BNK maybe a little nervous. Hmm. Oh, Forlex. Yeah, there might have been a sliver oh. of a chance. Addict just goes one too many on the swing, and so he's going to be punished for that. Super also doing damage with the Deagle. Braces down to 34 HP. This is actually winnable for Mind Freak if they can land their shots. Flash high in the sky. There's another one from Forlex. He's so scary with the Deagle. But he's also got the AWP. And Damio must convert this for BNK. Oh, no! Leg. The 15 HP, the leg shot. Forlex couldn't get it done. Time sticking away, but there's just not enough to matter. Forlex is going to hit it finally. The no scope connects onto Damio and what a round from Forlex. It took him everything under the sun to get rid of Damio but he did in the end and that is 12 for Mind Freak. Oh, it's and such that a, shifts the storyline a bit. Such a spaghetti ground. Completely yeah. all over the place. Tuck time out for Mind Freak. Looking to compose themselves after winning a big round like that. And... Look, we're not worried about economic reset in the sense that obviously Mind Freak is, you know, going to win this game overpass if they put more one round, one more round on the board. But more so, it's a case of, you know, B and K, keep an eye on these next couple of rounds because if they lose too many guns, they're not going to have the util to be able to stop, you know, the rush protocols. Not going to have the money to put an all back in the hands of PZ, who's having quite a good game for himself here. So, need some reasonably convincing rounds for the CTs here. Lost bonus is not good for Mind Freak, though. Mm. I think if they lose two in a row here, particularly without bomb plants, one of these is going to be a weaker buy for sure. So, really, only two gun rounds in the way of BNK potentially pushing us to OT here. I'm sure they'd love to get it done right here and now. That'll be the major goal for Mind Freak. But. 
like I said, I still don't necessarily have a huge amount of faith. The rounds that they've been this T side have been very. Not to say that it's impossible, but it ain't over till it's over. Particularly when you're against a team like BNK. And they're taking it very slow right now, my free car. Two players set up on long. PZ does well for the first. Has up one as well. So it wasn't exactly the start to the round that Mind Freak were looking for. Gump's taking pole position in bathroom side here, though. Damio, info push on short B. Doesn't see a whole lot of anything. And PZ with the smoke on divider. Aggressors onto the deep bathroom line. Addict deep into divider here. They're looking to fight the A site from deep in bathrooms. Gump could completely dismantle this round, though, if he finds the right timing to do so. Oh, he's going to catch PZ. No doubt about it. Question is, what can Addict now do? Gump is watching for it. He's been spotted. Did Addict see Gump? I don't know if he did. Gump definitely saw Addict. That's and he's going to get him. Such good awareness from Gump. Ooh. And you can see he's ready for that player on Divider because he sees the position of PZ. Like, why does PZ have Util out, have his knife out, if there's not a player deep bathrooms? Just process of elimination. And that's why Gump has just got such great game sense. 1v3 from Damio to save the game here, though. Sure that that's going to be possible. It certainly isn't slimy sharp, and he gets the 20 bomb to finish off the map. 20 and 12, and it's a map victory for Mind Freak, which is fantastic. Excellent stuff. I mean, you obviously just have to go back to what we were saying on Nuke and and uh, take a leap out of that book because we were saying, look, this is not looking good for Mind Freak. They're not looking uh, fantastic at all, and um, it took them a little bit to get rolling, but always going to.